This video shows an overall functional view of the Eric Watson Ori, which was built by him around 1986 and was from Saddleworth, England. Starting with the clockwork which drives the Ori, the clock unit is arranged at the base, which you can see here. Here are the legs and here is the uh, base of the Ori, which then begins up here with this lowest ring. The unit is arranged with the arbors vertical and the plates horizontal. The plates are circular with the center wheel which turns hourly exactly central and that is uh, shown right here and the drive from the clock to the time dial passes up a substantial column which you can see starting in up here and is actually enclosed by all of this gear work here. The arm for the yearly movement of the earth rotates around this column. Below the clock plates are bevel gears which enable the clock to be wound from the front. And that's these here. The gears provide for the resetting of the hands and the manual drive to the Ori, the demonstration, as well as here for the uh, winding of the Ori. The escapement is a large club tooth lever which beats seconds. The action of the lever escapement is very interesting to observe in that in this clock it is slow enough to be seen. The escapement is planted directly in the lower main plate of the clock here. And the upper ends of the escape wheel, lever, and balance arbors, as well as remontoir, are located on a long sub plate here. The jewel of holes and end stones are held in separate bushes. The escape wheel is steel and hardened and ground to size. Considering that some clocks have even counterbalanced hands, this movement has the impossible task of moving over 80 gear wheels. In order to help, it is fitted with a simple constant force impulse mechanism. We're now focusing in on the escapement as well as the constant force impulse mechanism, which is uh, commonly known as a remontoir. When the lever unlocks, the impulse has to occur very rapidly. And by fitting this flywheel to the escape pinion, and the flywheel is here in this uh, oil-filled can, and is attached here to the escape pinion, the train is unable to start in time to deliver the impulse, which instead comes from a small spring. And that spring, you can see, is located right here. This little purple spring. When the train does move, a fraction of a second later, the spring is rewound, and a pin on the flywheel arbor contacts a spoke of the escape wheel and stops. And you can see that happening as this comes there, right there. These two pins are on either side of that spoke, both stopping and delivering an impulse. This remontoir is based on a 1943 invention by Henry Generet, and it ensures that the escape wheel at the moment of release does not get its force directly from the spring barrels, but indirectly from that spiral hairspring that acts as a buffer. It is regularly wound via the gear train as soon as the escape wheel is stopped again. 
This allows the powerful mainspring to divert most of its energy to the Ori. Without the remontoir, it would be very difficult for the clockwork to directly power the rotation of the heavy armature, as well as the over 80 wheels within the Ori. I now return to an overview of the Ori. The solar system, which is what this Ori represents, the Earth and other planets circle around a fixed sun. And so a copper ball is located in the center, which portrays the sun, and is fitted in the center of the unit, and is above the time dial, which is here. The Earth, which rotates daily, has its axis tilted, and it is this tilt which causes our seasons, as first the northern and then the southern hemispheres swing toward the sun. There are three sets of gearing in the arm which carries the earth ball of the ori, one for each of the movements required. The main ori armature runs from this side all the way through to this side. Shown here is the complete armature for the Ori. In this still shot, you can see that it is made in two separate halves, which can be taken off as units. On the Earth side, which is the left-hand side, as seen in this still shot and in the overall uh, video that you just saw of the Ori, the drive which turns the earth ball daily is carried by a row of gears on the underside. Another train then causes the arm to rotate in 365 days, while a third train keeps the tilted axis of the earth ball constantly pointed in the same direction. Another train turns the moon arm around the earth, and three more gears keep the moon's bright side toward the sun. The earth ball is made of beaten copper, enameled, and fitted with continents cut from silver. The other half of the ori arm, that is to the right, carries the gearing for the outer planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. These are the traditional bright planets which are visible to the naked eye. The gearing which carries the planets around is epicyclic. That is, the gearbox itself moves around a fixed central gear along the center stalk and causes the final outer gear to change its position. As all of the outer planets go more slowly than the Earth, the rings each having about 600 teeth are carried forward on the arm and then pushed backwards by the gearing. The gearing for the two inner planets, Mercury and Venus, is mounted on a detachable turret on top of the Ori arm and are driven by the left hand of the Ori armature. The armature itself, which reaches across the breadth of the Ori, rotates once per year. The center section runs the sunrise and sunset dial work and has two of three fixed gears attached to the center stalk. These two gears are responsible for the drive to the Earth-Moon system and the inner planets. This next still shot shows the third fixed gear which drives the outer planets. In other words, those three wheels that we saw in the video that attach to the three very large 600 tooth rings are driven by this gear that runs just on top of the clockwork movement. In this still shot, we see the main mechanical components of the Ori. The three components below consist of the armature and the one above the clockwork drive. The time dial, by the way, is completely independent of the rest of the Ori so that it can be 
adjusted without uh, needing to interfere with the demo drive. Um, also, you can adjust this uh, dial here for um, daylight savings time as well as standard time and the sunrise and sunset dials can also be adjusted and that is shown in a later video.